cyborgs. All right, sir. Cyborgs, up to jump. Cover. Two. Center. Face. One step forward. Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthems and the invocation. Sixth Fleet, arriving. Vice Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Naval Forces Europe, Naval Forces Africa, arriving. Cyboys, left, right, face. Post. Color guard, parade the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthems of the Italian Republic and the United States of America.
post the colors. Captain Trost, 6th Fleet Chaplain, will deliver the invocation. Buongiorno, good morning. Let us invoke the presence of Almighty God upon this ceremony. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather this morning for a tradition rich in history and meaning that brings continuity of command to 6th Fleet. We give thanks this morning, first of all, for the great leadership, calm demeanor in, a, in an at times chaotic environment, and accomplishments made under the command of Vice Admiral Pandall, as he has worn many hats and balanced many demand signals during this tour. We also give thanks for the sacrifices of his wife, Anita, and their daughter, Chessie, who is here in spirit as they have endured many times of separation. As the awesome responsibility of command is passed to Vice Admiral Davidson this day, we pray that his time as commander be imbued with wisdom, courage, and above all care and respect for all whom he leads. May the legacy left by Vice Admiral Pandolf never be forgotten, and the great future of Sixth Fleet under Vice Admiral Davidson continue with honor and distinction. In your most holy name, we pray for these things. Amen. Will the guests please be seated? Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Pandall, Commander, United States Sixth Fleet. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. So the, the, they tell me it's going to rain out there. Uh, so we moved indoors, which of course means it's beautiful outside. But, uh, uh, but uh, we're so glad you're here this morning. Admiral Klingen, uh, fellow flag and general officers, distinguished guests, welcome. Greetings as well to our major commanders, family, friends, and shipmates, and of course our staff. I know how busy you all are, and I truly appreciate you being here today. I offer a special thanks uh, to the team that planned this ceremony. Uh, a lot of work went into it. Lieutenant Commander Wright, Master Chief Collins, Senior Chief Chadwell, our great protocol team of Freddie Wachinski and Jody Wright, all led with, with uh, able hands by Captain Bill Shearer and Rear Admiral John Knoll. They literally worked through thousands of details to pull this, this together today. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. Uh, nice, nicely done. And also for our side boys today, thank you for doing that. And finally, our band, which uh, the U.S. Naval Forces Europe Band adds so much color and depth to every ceremony in which they participate, so thank you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to open uh, today's ceremony by welcoming our guest speaker. He is an officer who everyone here knows very well uh, and has worked alongside, most of us have worked alongside for going on two years now. Admiral Bruce Klingen is a native of Lafayette, Indiana. He was raised in Washington State and graduated from the University of Washington through the NROTC program in June of 1977. He also holds a Master's of Science uh, degree in Systems Management from the University of Southern California. Since commissioning, Admiral Klingon has had a distinguished career, spanning almost four decades of naval service. He is an accomplished fighter pilot and a nuclear power trained officer who has commanded at all levels. Aircraft Squadron, VF-11, Fleet Flagship, USS LaSalle, aircraft carrier, USS Carl Vinson, and Carrier Strike Group 3. He also precedes me and several others as the former commander of Sixth Fleet and the commander of Striking and Support Forces NATO. During those tours and while serving ashore, he developed a very broad, perhaps unique, operational and strategic expertise. In Europe, he served on the staff, on in-staff assignments in Naples and Lisbon, and in Mons, Belgium. 
He also had key assignments in U.S. Central Command in Tampa, Florida, and on the Navy staff in the Pentagon and Washington, D.C., in both the requirements and the policy worlds. Today, Admiral Klingon wears multiple hats. He serves as commander of U.S. Naval Forces Europe and Africa, and also as commander of NATO's Allied Joint Force Command, Naples. In those roles, he challenges every one of us to stay ready and to plan carefully and thoroughly for contingencies. Key tasks in our highly dynamic and rapidly evolving theater of operations. An unmatched passion for operational planning is his hallmark, and we are better prepared for the challenges of today and of tomorrow because of the leadership of Admiral Klingon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the commander of U.S. Naval Forces Europe and Africa, Admiral Bruce Klingon. Admiral Pandoff, thanks for that kind invitation. It, uh, it always stuns me a little bit when he mentions 1977, <laughs> uh, but thanks. Distinguished guests, fellow flag and general officers, family and friends, good morning and once again welcome to the Sixth Fleet Change of Command Ceremony. Admiral Fofi, Prefect Mussolino, Dr. Colangelo, Dr. Giancani, General Achille, Counselor Barroso, thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedules to join us today. Your presence here is a great honor. For all our Italian friends and colleagues, I cannot pass up the opportunity to express our gratitude for the warmth and hospitality extended to our service members and their families wherever they may wander throughout Italy. I know I speak for all of us here today that we are indeed fortunate to experience the rich culture and to be in the company of such wonderful people. Now, I think we all know why we're here today, to welcome Anita back to Italy. <laughs> Anita, it's not lost on any of us that you've been very busy getting things set up as the advance guard for Frank's next assignment in Washington, D.C. So we're delighted that you could return. Your presence today is a fitting example of the commitment and contributions to our loved ones. Commitment and contributions that our loved ones make in concert with the service of sailors, soldiers, airmen, and Marines throughout the world. Over the past two years, your enthusiasm has inspired us. We thank you for the boundless energy you have applied to the well-being and quality of life of all of our sailors here in Naples, in Gaeta, and Lisbon, and beyond. You can be certain you're going to be missed. While we're welcoming Anita back, it's unfortunately a short-lived delight. We must reluctantly embrace that the time has come to bid farewell to an accomplished naval leader. A leader who has harnessed the immense intellectual capital resident in our staff of military and civilian professionals to shape the operational environment. A commander who has been the driving force behind the Sixth Fleet's success in effectively responding to numerous crises over an expansive area of responsibility. I am certain when Admiral Pandoff took the helm two years ago, he did not imagine his area of responsibility would emerge as the most challenging and complex environment the U.S. operates, the U.S. Navy operates today. It's not a soundbite that Brenda, our gifted public affairs officer, cooked up. That's the sentiment of a ship captain who recently surged from the Arabian Gulf to the Eastern Mediterranean. The volatility of the Levant, North Africa, in fact, throughout much of Africa, is unprecedented. And the potential for miscalculation leading to unintended conflict is high. In this context, the importance of strategic patience 
and considered actions has never been more poignant. Admiral Pandoff artfully mastered these imperatives, and it is in this vein that I would like to highlight just a few of his immense contributions. First and foremost, Frank astutely commanded and controlled Sixth Fleet contributions to a broad spectrum of counterterrorism and crisis response operations, from the Horn of Africa to Benghazi to Mali. His concepts of operation and meticulous employment of scarce assets contributed to the sterling success of named operations that have disrupted the radical Islamist organizations that increasingly threaten the security of Africans, Europeans, Americans alike. Most recently, he moved quickly to position forces in the Eastern Mediterranean subsequent to the employment of chemical weapons in the outskirts of Damascus thereby providing immediate response options to President Obama as he consulted with allies regarding the most efficacious way forward. Today, those same forces remain thoughtfully employed to inspire Syria to quickly and completely eliminate its chemical weapons. Second, as many of our military colleagues appreciate, Planning is the foundation of timely military advice and a rapid response to crises. Considering the turmoil in the Levant and across Africa, you can imagine the contingency planning burden associated with being the naval component for two separate combatant commanders. Moreover, the potential for multiple simultaneous operations has never been higher requiring thorough examination of the synchronization necessary to execute concurrent plans with limited resources. If you examined these efforts in detail, you would find Admiral Pandoff's fingerprints on our, on, uh, are on more than 50 combatant commander and naval component plans. I think that's a record in Sixth Fleet history. Finally, Admiral Pandoff's engagement with key leaders has measurably enhanced our collective security. Whether in Africa, inspiring emerging partners to improve their maritime security capacity, or in Europe, implementing ballistic missile defense initiatives, or throughout his vast area of responsibility, building trust and interoperability through exercises and conferences, he has inspired collaboration that has enhanced the readiness of the Alliance and that of our partners to address the security challenges of our time. Speaking of the Alliance, it is widely known that Admiral Pandoff also commanded naval strike and support forces in addition to the Sixth Fleet. Some in the audience may not appreciate that he did so during a significant period of restructuring within the Alliance. As part of this sweeping reform, he executed the relocation of Strike 4 NATO staff and families from Naples to Lisbon, Italy in just four months, two years ahead of schedule, without common funding and without compromising war fighting readiness. Moreover, despite this disruption, he and his staff developed a joint headquarters for maritime expeditionary operations concept that has been accepted by NATO. As usual, no good idea goes unpunished. So NATO, Strike Force NATO, has been formally tasked to provide this key capability to the NATO alliance by next year. Frank, I know I speak for all of us here today. Thank you for your many contributions and congratulations on your selection to be the Joint Staff Director of Strategic Plans and Policy. I won't be surprised to see you on this stage again sometime in the future, assuming Command and Naval Forces Europe and Naval Forces Africa. Admiral Davidson, Tracy, welcome aboard. We're eager to introduce both of you to our wonderful host nation 
and you can be certain that you are already intimate members of the Naples family. Phil, I'm sure you've discerned by now that you're going to be busy. Well, purely coincidental, it is extraordinary that this is the fourth time Admiral Davidson has relieved Admiral Pando. This circumstance bodes well for a seamless transition, which is important in view of the security environment and the ongoing operations. You're joining a staff that is competent, hardworking, and most importantly, comprised of great Americans that are absolutely delightful to work with. Your extensive operational and staff experience make you a great addition to the team and perfectly suited to command the Sixth Fleet. We all look forward to working with you. Maybe in about 45 minutes at that operational planning group meeting, <laughs> but maybe not this afternoon, though I'm sure it will be soon enough if the chief of staff gets his way. In any event, <clears throat> Phil and Tracy, welcome. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you again for joining us at today's ceremony. I'm particularly thankful for the presence of so many Italian friends and colleagues. It exemplifies our fruitful collaboration to advance peace, prosperity, and freedom. It was my privilege today to highlight the immense contributions of both Admiral Pandoff and Mrs. Pandoff to these ends and it is now my honor to formally recognize those contributions. Frank, please join me center stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the award presentation. <clears throat> the President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Distinguished Service Medal to Vice Admiral Frank C. Pandolf, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation for exceptionally meritorious service to the government of the United States in the duties of great responsibility while serving as Commander, U.S. Sixth Fleet, Commander, Naval Striking and Support Forces, NATO, and Deputy Commander, U.S. Naval Forces, Europe, Africa, from October 2011 to October 2013. Vice Admiral Pandolf's vision, operational experience, and tactical expertise were central to the success of 19 operations and numerous contingency planning efforts in two highly dynamic theaters. His keen direction enabled prompt and effective mission execution by five task force commanders. In the wake of a terrorist attack in Benghazi, Libya, his astute command of maritime forces resulted in highly synchronized, timely, and effective operations in support of Commander, U.S. Africa Command. In Europe, he established afloat ballistic missile defense patrols in the Mediterranean Sea and meticulously prepared the foundation for forward deployed naval forces in Spain and Aegis ashore sites in Romania and Poland. Under his leadership, Strike Forces NATO staff and their families relocated ahead of schedule from Naples to Lisbon, where he led the development of a joint force headquarters capability for the Alliance. Finally, during the Syrian chemical weapons crisis, he rapidly positioned Sixth Fleet assets to provide immediate, credible military options to the President of the United States. By his superior leadership, wise judgment, and deep devotion to duty, Vice Admiral Pandolf reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, Ray Mavis, Secretary of the Navy. <laughs> Will Mrs. Pandolf please join Vice Admiral Pandolf on the platform? Admiral Klingon, 
will now present an award to Mrs. Pandall. The Secretary of the Navy takes great pleasure in presenting the Navy Meritorious Public Service Award to Mrs. Anita Pandolf for service as set forth in the following citation. For meritorious public service by providing sterling leadership, support, guidance, and counsel to American service members, civilians, and their families in the U.S. Sixth Fleet and striking and support forces NATO from October 2011 to October 2013. Demonstrating unique grace, warmth, and understanding, Mrs. Pandolf served as a trusted advocate and friend of the NATO community. As an active board member of the Allied Spouses Club, she planned and executed two highly successful fundraising luncheons for the international community and helped organize the American Ladies Booth at two NATO annual bazaars. As a board member of the USA Girl Scouts overseas, she furthered programs that provide important educational and cultural opportunities for young women. Furthermore, as a member of the Strike Force NATO's family working group, she aided in that command's relocation from Naples, Italy to Lisbon, Portugal, providing valued assistance to families from 11 nations. Finally, Anita flawlessly represented the United States in numerous diplomatic settings, including the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium, Regional Sea Power Symposium, UCOM and AFRICOM Commanders Conferences, Monaco's National Days, and numerous public and private events with our Italian and Portuguese hosts. Mrs. Pandolf's exceptional vision, giving, and commitment to our service members and their families reflected great credit upon herself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Department of the Navy. Signed, Bruce W. Klingon, Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, U.S. Naval Forces Europe, Commander, U.S. Naval Forces Africa. Guests, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Pandolf, Commander, United States Sixth Fleet. Well, good morning again. I chose uh, Colonel McCarthy for this role because he's a wonderful planner and he's been a great officer to work with. But it turns out he's got a radio voice that can't be beat. <laughs> Admiral McClingan, thank you for your kind words to both myself and to Phil. Uh, your leadership has meant so much and your presence here today honors us. Additionally, I would like to honor some other special guests, some of whom were mentioned previously. Uh, Vice Admiral Fofi of the Italian Navy is here. Uh, it means a great deal to us, sir, as I mentioned privately earlier. Admiral Fofi is my counterpart. He's the uh, commander of the Italian fleet in Taranto. And uh, we have had uh, several uh, good meetings together, and he was kind enough to host me aboard his flagship, as I'll mention shortly. His Excellency uh, Mussolino, pre Prefect of Naples, Italy, is here with us this morning. Thank you, sir. And Major General Giancane, Minister of the Budget, is here. Good morning, sir. Professor Coangelo is here. He is the Procuratore Capo di Napoli. Uh, the United States Consul General from Naples is here, uh, Ms. Columbia Barossa. Uh, thank you for joining us, ma'am. Uh, Lieutenant General Achille and Major General Ferla of the Guardia di Finanza are here as well. Major General Adolfini of the Carabinieri, Major General Giancotti of the Italian Air Force, and Ramo Basile of the, the Naples Port Commandant have joined us. Uh, also here this morning is Admiral Persendo, who's the Commandant of the Maritime Region, up in the Gaeta area. And from Joint Force Command Naples, we are honored by the presence of multiple flag officers. Lieutenant General Vance, Lieutenant General Bovio, Major General Dean, Major General Berger, Major General Wayhill, Major General Angelotti, Brigadier General Berghoff, and Command Sergeant Major Jarabek have all joined us. And of course, we are joined today by our sailors, from our staff, 
and our task forces, and very importantly, by many, many close friends and family. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it before, but it's true. This award reflects the collective efforts of everyone in this audience. And as such, it belongs to our staff. The, the kind words that Admiral Klingen uh, spoke a few moments ago don't reflect my performance. They reflect your performance. And, and uh, as I will say, uh, I have been very, very fortunate to have been part of this team. I have, I have been grateful to have an opportunity to work with all of you. During my time in Naples, I have come to appreciate how lucky I am to have sailed alongside such wonderful shipmates. Please know that when I wear this award, it will remind me of each of you. As I look back on the last two years, which have gone by in the blink of an eye, as I mentioned to Admiral Davidson a moment ago, I am amazed at the change that has taken place. The region in which we operate is indeed, as Admiral Klingen said, highly dynamic and unpredictable. It requires ready forces that are thoroughly trained and properly positioned, well focused and practiced at working alongside our allies to enhance security and stability in this area. Meeting those goals requires close teamwork by skilled professionals who are incredibly dedicated to each other and to the mission. And that brings me to you. And so as I thought about what I might say this morning, I decided to simply say thank you for all that you have done. I would like to thank, by, I would like to begin by thanking our Italian friends. Anita and I will forever remember the great kindnesses we experienced during our, our time here in Italy. At the heart of those memories is the ages, ageless beauty of this nation and her people. We have had the good fortune <clears throat> to make so many Italian friends over the past two years. <clears throat> For example, although they have moved on to other assignments, Anita and I can't thank Vice Admiral and Rita Verri enough for including us in so many memorable events at Admiralty Palace, or for Major General Monica Baldi for inviting us to the Air Force Academy to enjoy Neapolitan music. We have also been very grateful for the impressive protection of our carabinieri detail. We have come to know them and their families very well. As we have so many other wonderful Italian friends who have enriched our lives here in Naples. You are far too many to name, but you came here to celebrate with us today, and we are very happy that you did. <clears throat> Please know, we will always remember you. And what an amazing place this is. My family and I have walked the streets of this city so many times, savoring its unique blend of the ancient and the modern, its beauty and its energy. Yet we have barely scratched the surface of all the wonders that it holds. One could truly spend a lifetime within 50 miles of Naples and not see all that there is to see. So it is with profound respect that I offer the following words to our Italian friends. Per tutti voi qui stamattina, grazie mille per la vostra ospitalità, la vostra amicizia e la vostra pazienza, ma soprattutto per un regalo che la vostra patria ha dato a tutto il mondo. Davanti anni fa, mie nonne lasciarono per andare al mondo nuovo portando con loro la cultura dell'Italia, per poi trasmetterla a mio padre e a me. Quindi, per me è stato un onore avere la possibilità di abitare per due anni in questo bellissimo paese e di avere conosciuto tutti voi. Grazie di cuore. I've also been privileged to represent our Navy in Gaeta, where our flagship, USS Mount Whitney, is home ported. There we have experienced the warm hospitality of that lovely and historic community, which has such close ties to our families and their, and, and their sailors. I'm sorry, our sailors and their families. And for those of us who have traveled from Gaeta today, welcome as well. As guests of the Italian Navy, Anita and I have shared the wonders of Venice. And I was honored to be hosted aboard the Italian aircraft carrier Cavour by Admiral Fofi in Toronto. For each and every one of those experiences, on a very personal level, 
we are thankful. Also during this tour, I've been honored to re represent Sixth Fleet throughout Europe, Africa, and Israel. And in every place, I was received with great kindness and courtesy. The frank conversations that I had with my counterparts underlined time and again the centrality of our combined efforts to countering the growing threats of this new age. I just finished reading a book I recommended to you. It's called The Great Sea by David Abulafia. He's a professor of history at Cambridge. It's a history of the Mediterranean, and it conveys the critical role played by that sea in the advancement of civilization as an avenue to spread culture and trade, as a stage for conflict, and as a path to new destinations for those seeking a better life. All of those things describe the Mediterranean today. This magnificent sea lies at the heart of a highly dynamic region that is critical to present and will be to the present events as well as future events. It is a gathering place where nations work together to meet the challenges of regional instability, terrorism, and the illegal transfer of weapons, money, drugs, and people. We meet those challenges together in the greatest alliance the world has ever known. At 28 Nations, NATO is the largest peacetime alliance in history, and it reflects a lasting agreement and a full understanding that our security truly is stronger together. It is an alliance that reflects our profound commitment to the universal values of freedom and dignity that first took root in the soil of these Mediterranean lands. So I am honored that so many members from Allied Joint Force Command Naples have joined us today. Thank you. But the major message I have for this morning is one of pride in the wonderful staff assembled here today and in our superb task forces. I will forever remember your tremendous dedication and spirit. I reported aboard in October 2011 at the tail end of Operation Unified Protector, where NATO and the UN worked together to protect the people of Libya. I watched your performance from afar, and I knew I was joining a warfighting staff that was equal to any in the world. And you just got better from there. Last year, when terrorists attacked our council in Benghazi, you, we once again embarked Mount Whitney and took charge of defending all that we hold dear. In the weeks at sea, together, I watched you, and you were amazing. The imagination, mutual support, and operational effectiveness you demonstrated were truly first rate. General Ham, commander of US Africa Command, praised your performance by saying that our naval forces performed superbly, providing him with credible options he needed to enhance security during a very difficult time. Just by chance, I ran into General Hamm in Washington two weeks ago, and he remains thoroughly impressed by the great work that you did. As mentioned more recently, when chemical weapons were used in Syria, you once again rose to the challenge. By rapidly positioning the fleet, you provided the capabilities needed to deter further use of these terrible weapons. Our forces were trained when called upon because of you. They were properly positioned because of you. And they were ready because of you. For the past two years, the staff and our task forces, our ships, aircraft, and sailors in the fleet have worked together to enhance security throughout this theater. From ballistic missile defense to preparing for crisis response and conducting maritime security operations, you delivered success to this region, to our nation, and to the NATO alliance. And I am very proud of you, what you have done. So as I look around this audience this morning, I see so many faces that in other places and other days, I saw focused on the mission at hand, mentoring fellow sailors, briefing the staff, enjoying each other's company, and supporting one another. You are a team. You are a family. And it has been a tremendous privilege to sail with you. I have every confidence that when the call comes again, you will be ready. And it will come. We do not know when or where or why. But this great sea has not send, seen the end of strife. The profound issues of human dignity and freedom are not settled. And so ready we must stay 
and ready you will be. Of course, no man is an island, and I've been blessed to share my life with my lovely wife, Anita, and my wonderful daughter, Francesca. Anita, thank you for all you have given to our family over the past two years. This has been a wonderful adventure together. Your amazing spirit and warm smile have brought so much brightness to our Navy and Naples communities. You truly are my better half. I love you and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And so it's time for me to say goodbye. Now, fortunately, this task is made easier because I am ceding command to a very close friend for whom I have the greatest respect. Vice Admiral Phil Davidson is a tremendous officer in every way. He is smart and energetic, visionary, and he is a caring leader. He and his lovely wife, Tracy, are exactly the right team to lead this command into the, into the future toward greater success. Phil, Tracy, welcome and congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, one final time, it has been a profound honor to serve with you here in Naples in Sixth Fleet. Thank you for everything you have done to support me and Anita during the past two years. But more importantly, thank you for everything you have done to protect and defend the cause of freedom. I will now read my orders. From Chief of Naval Operations to Vice Admiral Frank C. Pandolf, USN, subject, Change of duty order number 2143. When directed, detached from duty as Commander, United States Sixth Fleet. Commander, Naval Striking and Support Forces, NATO. Deputy Commander, United States Naval Forces, Europe. Deputy Commander, U.S. Naval Forces, Africa. And Joint Force, Maritime Component Commander, Europe. Report for duty as directed to assume responsibilities as Director, Strategic Plans and Policy, Joint J-5, the Joint Staff, Washington, D.C., and Senior Member, United States Delegation to the United Nations Military Staff Committee. Admiral Davidson, I am ready to be relieved. I will now read my orders. Subject, change of duty order number 1793. When to directed, detached from duty as Director, Maritime Operations, United States Fleet Forces Command. And report as Commander, United States Sixth Fleet, Commander, Naval Striking and Support Forces, NATO, Deputy Commander, U.S. Naval Forces, Europe, Deputy Commander, United States Naval Forces, Africa, and Joint Force Maritime Commander, Europe. Admiral Pandolf. privilege. Uh, it falls to me uh, to thank many in the audience today, uh, distinguished guests, fellow flag and general officers, headquarters staff, family, friends. Thank you for joining us here today. Your presence is testament to your outstanding support of the United States Navy family here in Naples and to Vice Admiral Frank Pandoff's exceptional work here as Commander of the United States Sixth Fleet. Grazie. I must immediately thank all those that made this wonderful ceremony possible, especially Captain Bill Scherer, Ms. Freddie Wachensky, everyone on the Change of Command Committee, as well as the marvelous U.S. Naval Forces Europe Band. Thank you very much. <laughs> Adam Klingen, thank you for the very kind words of the ceremony today. I'm looking forward to the many months ahead. Vice Admiral Pandoff. As Admiral Klingon said, this will be the fourth time. I'm going to stop reading where you're going. <laughs> As always, you leave far, large footprints behind you. 
Thank you for your hard work as Commander Sixth Fleet and as Deputy Nav Ur and Nav Aft, and for your thoughtful advice this past week. Also, I must thank the entire headquarters for the preparatory briefings. Staff here, uh, staff, I have closely observed your efforts from afar for several months now, and I must say that I am impressed by your enthusiasm and your professionalism. Most importantly, soprattutto, lasciatemi ringraziare il nostro ospite, la favolosa città di Napoli. È chiaro che il vostro sostegno è ospitalato. Ospitalata. Sono solo l'inizio e la vostra amicizia che purtroppo rende a tutto lo staff e la loro famiglia il vivere, lavorare e stare qui un vero piacere. Grazie. Grazie davvero cuore da tutti noi qui a Com Six Fleet. Io e Tracy non vediamo l'ora di diventare parte della vostra comunità. Admiral Klingen and Vice Admiral Pandoff have articulated quite well for you the many accomplishments and attributes of the United States Sixth Fleet. Let me add just one short thought. All of us in the United States Navy continue to be guided by our Chief of Naval Operations three tenets, to focus our efforts on warfighting first, to operate forward, to deter, to influence events, and to win in an era of uncertainty, and to be ready, be ready to employ our forces if called upon to do so. At US Sixth Fleet, we can and will continue to embody these tenets in our current operations, in our readiness to respond to crisis, and in the many partnerships we have here in Europe and Africa. In other words, you can continue to rely on the United States Navy. Admiral Klingen, Vice Admiral Pandoff, thank you once again. I look forward to working with all of you, and thank you all for your presence and participation here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing throughout the departure of the official party and their families. Captain Trost will deliver the benediction. Let us pray. Most holy God, we have seen the baton of command pass this morning. We ask your blessings upon Vice Admiral Davidson and, and Anita, or excuse me, Vice Admiral Pandolf and Anita as they head back stateside to DC. As they reunite with friends from the past, we pray that their time of transition is as peaceful as transitions can be. We also ask your blessings upon Vice Admiral Davidson and his wife Tracy as they settle here in Italy and for the entire Six Fleet staff. Under his leadership and direction, may we always exhibit the best our country has to offer as we respond to future tasking and crises in this very diverse and complex area we serve. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Post. Post the sideboards. Aye, aye, sir. Naval Forces Europe, Naval
sixth fleet departing. 